Hi, I'm Patty with Studio Art 12 Stencils, and today we are going to paint a table runner, and we're going to use a fabric called Rocklon. And I think that you're absolutely going to dig it. It's a really neat spin, so stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get started. The first thing I want to let you know about is our giveaways. We always have giveaways on our lives. So we have three sets of brushes. If you love these brushes, go ahead and give them a shout out so everybody else can get educated about them. We're gonna give away three sets and you just have to like, share, and comment. So it's an easy, easy win for whoever's gonna win them. And then you also get to get entered into our grand prize drawing, which is for a set of Christmas stencils that are um, sleigh rides, reindeer treats, Christmas tree, um, the classic red truck, we love that one, um, holiday treat shop, and old-fashioned cocoa. And what's neat about this set is it comes with a set of alphabets in the um, uppercase and lowercase, and then some neat embellishments as well. So you can take these and you can, there's an etched line, I don't know if you can see it very well, um, there's an etched line at the top with a centering mark. The centering mark is really important because you can count your letters and then you can establish where the center is. And then you can do each individual letter on your set and make little personalized signs. Like how cool is that? Like it's the wombo combo right there. And if I knew what combo it was, it is a combination. So CMBN 400. So if you're interested in this and you don't win the prize, then you can go on our website and search for CMBN 400. So let's get started. So today we are going to paint on Rocklon. If I can get my stencils off here. We're gonna paint on Rocklon. And Rocklon, I've got a little piece here because I've got this 54 inch table runner. Um, I've got a big dining room table. This is the fabric that you see in the hotel room that, you know, that has your window that's blackening. So it's a shade darkening fabric, if you will. There is a cream colored side that is like a almost like a rubbery texture and then the other side is almost like a canvas texture so what's really cool about that is you can paint either side it just depends on what the effect is that you want the other thing that's really cool about this is you can cut it into any shape that you want we have folded over the top and we've made banners out of it so you can cut the bottom into a shape or whatever. We've done a million things with this, but Table Runner is one of my favorites. To store it, you can simply roll it up. This one's been rolled, um, rolled and taped, uh, but you can put that in a cardboard tube like a um, wrapping paper tube to protect it. One thing that I will tell you about it is if you store it like under something, it will eventually take on that shape. However, I've got a magic trick, okay? so. This one is, you can see it's been rolled up and you can see that the, it's still got that little flippy flip. Number one, paint will help us get rid of that, but heat also helps. So if I heat it, it'll start flattening out and see that's already tremendously better with just a second of heat. So I'm gonna pull up a piece of paper and because I've got my project in place, I'm trying to keep everything on this table controlled and I want to show you how we're going to paint it. So what I've done, what I've done is, get everything, what I've done is, um, I've painted on the textured side. So I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to use a roller, and this is just a foam roller. Tip of the day, one of many tips of the day. Um, actually, so stay tuned through this whole thing. Um, I'm a stencil professional and I have a stencil company and I bleeded under <gasps> horror, right? Um, I actually was like a little horrified, horrified. Um, but what happened is I was doing this project over the edge of a table and it pulled my stencil and it made it poke up and do all kinds of things. And so I'm gonna show you how to fix something if it bleeds under. I'm gonna show you how to um, not have that happen now that I've made that happen. I'm gonna show you what brush to use 
and then I'm going to show you how to do it right. So even stencil professionals are humbled in the day of I don't know, stencil reckoning, I'm not sure. Okay, so funny little backstory. Um, we did this stencil with a tea towel stent. Uh, we did this table runner with a tea towel stencil. And I painted it a yellow creamy color, and then I didn't like that, so then I mixed some other colors. And didn't I mix the exact color of the backside of the rock lawn, which I thought was super funny, because I worked pretty hard to get that color mixed. So I'm going to take three colors. I wanted, this is the one I started with, and if you notice, it's extremely yellow. So then I put these two, I wanted it to lean to gray, but I wanted to lighten it. So that's why I chose these colors. And so I'm going to just put out, and this is how I measure paints when you're going to um, mix paints, so I can remember. So if I have to, if I mess up and I've mixed my base color, then I know how I can fix it. So I'm gonna squeeze out what I call like a, we're gonna call that a quarter size, or maybe it's easing into a half dollar size. Oop, hey, you know what? That one wasn't shook. I ran out of paint and had to grab a bottle from someplace else. And now we clean up. Good thing that I didn't do that over our project. All right, so what would you do if you did that over your project? Um, really good um, question that you asked. Um, you would go ahead and wipe it up just like I did. You'd dry it. And then if, you, if it was like a medium, like so paint is mixed with like an emulsifier. Um, if it's a medium that is like not going to allow other paint to stick, then what I would do is I'd seal it with multi-purpose sealer. So if that was a problem, this is like wet right there. Um, definitely you could tell it was not the plastic part of the paint. Um, but I would just seal it under and, um, and then I would base it after that and start over. <laughs> Bottle's still wet. Okay, so I wanna know, it's Christmas time. Do you not love our wall? Like, oh, so great. We have so many Christmas stencils. You need to check out our Christmas section. Um, it's magic, really. Okay, so three-ish equals, it's not really equal, but we're gonna go with it. Um, and palette and knife, yes. Palette and knives, you always wanna go with the offset one. It, um, if you do something flat like this, you have to lay it down on your palette and then you run through everything else that's on your palette. An offset one allows your hand to stay above whatever else is going on in your palette. I cannot tell you how many times I've tried to use the back of my brush and then I've ended up screwing everything up. So, um, but, so what I was saying earlier, while I'm mixing my paint, is it's Christmas time. And so we wanna know what's your favorite Christmas movie? You know, what do you watch every year? Ours is Muppet Christmas Carol. And we watch it every year on Christmas Eve because there's just one more sleep till Christmas. And we love it. And our family is Muppet mania really. Okay, so I didn't add enough of the lighter color and that turned out way too dark, so. And now this is something that's interesting. Um, I call it mixing a pile of mud. So when you mix your paints, the darkest one is always the littlest amount because if, like I mixed mud um, and I made a big pile of it, I should have pulled out some of it and then added a bit more of this because it will be very, I'll have to add like half the jar of this to make this light enough because the dark is gonna conquer the lighter colors. So just learn from my mistake and know that that is a thing. So after you get it mixed, wipe it off on your palette and then I always just pinch that. I try not to throw these into water because they get rusty sometimes. They're not made out of like the best material. And then I'm gonna chuck that away and I'm gonna get my roller. So I've kept my roller in a piece of plastic bag and then I fished it out of the garbage. Um, it was not dirty garbage. Anyway, so it's wet from when I was basing the original project. So I like to keep a roller wet until I don't need it anymore. And so you can even actually keep them in the fridge um, if you want to. Don't keep them too long. And make sure that it's a bag that is not like um, a Ziploc bag. And you have to do, like this is actually really important. You have to get it in there and then you have to roll the whole thing up. If you get a Ziploc bag that's too small, it won't allow you to kind of pinch that down and then it'll be open and then the edge of your roller will get dry. Okay, so that's just a good tip. All right, so now we've got Noel live. 
um, answering questions. And so she is going to want to know where you guys are from, what the weather's like, you know, are we having like cold and brr, are we doing like warm things, what's going on? Let her know. And Noelle's fabulous, so say hi to her too. All right, so I'm going to roll this into my paint. And I've already got a start on it, so I'm not worried about loading too much. And then I'm going to go ahead and just roll the rock lawn just like you would a board, okay? And then I would do that for the whole thing, and I would do two coats. And then I would take my sanding block, but not the rough sand, not the rough sandpaper. But um, when it's dry, I would sand the fabric because it gets a little bit of um, paint texture. And so I would sand that um, away. And then I would wipe it off. Okay, so I'm just showing you that's the first step. I did a lot of work with my T-square when I was um, setting up for this project. Let me get rid of my giant pile of paint. And we're gonna switch to our red. And I'm gonna get rid of the stuff. I was worried it was gonna bleed through underneath my, um, onto my project. Okay, so I'll just put that in the trash. Okay, and then, so what I did with this, I have a two part stencil here. And that's important because, and part two under here. All right, so what you do, and I'm gonna pull it away so that you can see. I'm gonna flip it over so it's the right way. What we do at our company so that it makes it easier on you at studior12.com, that's our, our website, is we etch the other part of the stencil so that you can line it up really well. So everything needs to line up. Shoop, shoop, shoop. All right, I'm not far enough. What am I doing wrong? Okay, that's what I'm doing wrong. Doo -doo. I'm actually, there we are. Every now and again, I need to take one of those like intelligence tests. <laughs> the heck? Okay, I've got a couple pieces of tape. This is just painter's tape. So what I did, you saw how I struggled. Um, and that actually is why we put those marks there because I was all like trying to line this up way up here. The edges of our stencils also match, so I should have taken my clue with that. Um, we don't get to paint an awful lot with the extra large size stencils um, because we're usually trying to keep everything like tight and in, a, in the camera eye and all of that stuff. So we actually don't do too much of this, but um, table runners, that had to happen. So this is a good thing to show you what you need to do. All right, so we're gonna line it up. We know that our edges need to be even. We know that all of our um, lines need to match. Shoop, shoop, shoop. You have to make squeaky little sounds while you're doing it. And then I taped it together. Oops, taped it together so the tape stays on the stencil. All right, and then what I did is I measured it from side to side. So I took, da da da, I took a T-square and I did a lot of this back and forth. And for me, I did two inches of space at the top and two inches of space at the bottom. Okay, and then um, I measured on each side to make sure that it was even. Okay, so that's how I got it centered to where I've got it centered. Okay, and then I wanna show you my mistakes. Okay, so after I started painting, take this away. After I started painting, um, what happened was this stencil was kind of, I was like this over, and if you can see right here, with this being flexed over, this is seven mil mylar, which means it's super durable, super reusable, and super like all the things. But it's stiff enough that when you add that pressure, you're gonna get some lift. And I was getting lift. And um, I might have been in a hurry, and I might have been not taking care, and I might have been being normal. And so, oops. Anyway, so what I got, and I'll show you, is I got some hairy, fuzzy lines. I never get hairy, fuzzy lines. Um, but I've got them here. I've got them here in spades, okay? So because it was just dragging it. So two things that I took from that um, is I took the argument that when you know you're going to need it, the repositionable tape 
is your best darn friend because what I'm about to show you about how to fix this after I show you how to stencil it is gonna make you sad. <laughs> You're gonna have to do this if you mess up. So learn from me and I'll show you how not to mess up. And I'll go ahead of you. All right, so now tell us what is like on your Christmas list for um, from Studio R12. Like what would you tell your husband that you wanted and like, you know, what's, what's your favorite thing that you've just like waited on and you know you want it, but you haven't done it yet? Like, let us know. We're excited to know. All right, so I'm gonna line this back up and I've gotta line it up with all the things. And I actually, Lena is really, 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 really good at this. And I am not. So I end up going like 12 ways for Sunday to get it all lined up. As soon as I think I've got it lined up, I'll find an area that's not. Okay, I've got a little bit outside here. So I just jockey it around until I feel like everywhere okay, is lined up. All right, and then I wanna make sure that I'm secure. So I've already done this side. Um, one thing that we need to talk about, there's a little elephant in the room that you don't know is here, and that is when you, let me t pull this away, two-part stencils. So we have a lot of really cool extra-large stencils. I mean, you can't find them anywhere because other companies aren't willing to do this, okay? But when we leave this harsh line right here, um, if you stencil all the way to that harsh line, then what's going to happen is you're going to leave a line and then when you pick up more paint to do the other side on this stencil, excuse me, then what happens there is um, it will make this side darker and this side will be lighter and then you will end up futzing back and forth between the two of those things forever. So you'll swirl to get close and then as soon as this one picks up, then you stop painting that and then you'll pick up on this side. So don't try to go all the way to the edges on harsh, sharp lines, because that, you'll be sad. And I'm gonna take this part away. So remember to like, share, and comment. Brushes are at stake here. Tell us what you love about these brushes. Tell us how they saved your bacon when it's bleeding under time. Like, let us know. Like, you're, you're also not, so, like I get a little, um, a little bit weird about this. I don't like to ask people to help me. So like, it's really great when you like and share, you're helping our company, you're helping us grow, you're helping all of our employees, you're doing all of those things. Like that's like, woo, great. But what's in it for you is when Mary or Martha or whoever we have watching us today um, is on there and they're saying like, oh my gosh, this has changed my world. Like you're helping your fellow painters as well. And then those fellow painters are helping you. So it's a great big all like help fest. So I think it's a really, really valuable. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this all the way down. And then um, when I cut this fabric, I just used scissors. I used my T-square, I measured, I cut it, made it the line. We sell the fabric on our website. However, I strongly encourage you to go to Joanne Fabrics or whoever you love um, and go ask for it there. It's drapery lining fabric or blackout fabric. It has a feel like a little bit like rubber. Um, it's like $7.99, $8.99 a yard, and we're going to charge like $8.99 a piece to cut it. So just FYI, we don't want to do it. We do it just to help people that can't find it. Um, I don't think they carry it in Canada. We sell a lot to Canada. So if you want it, we'll do it for you, but it'll cost you more, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to make money that way. So anyway, so we're going to move you here so you can see what's going on, and I'm going to show you how to stencil the right way. Okay, so what we're going to do, number one, I'm not pulled over. Number two, I'm in a really big space. So big spaces, I can almost show you the bounce of this R right here. It's not even touching the edge. It's just kind of bouncing away. So there's a gap right there. So when I'm swirling, I'm gonna be pushing paint straight on, like look, I can pick it up. Straight on under there. Okay, so that was part of my problem earlier. So how do we fix that? I'm gonna show you. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take up my stencil that I worked so hard to position 
and we're gonna add some of this. We're gonna flip it over. And on the big long stretches, we're just gonna add a little dash. Okay, you don't need to do everywhere. Um, I still haven't done my homework, um, it's been months, um, but I still haven't worried about how to get it off. Um, stencils are things that I don't have to reuse because of my position in this thing. Um, so I can just have them cut me another one. But um, either put it on something that won't stick to it, like we tried a um, piece of plastic, um, another piece of mylar, or something like that. But just like play around with how not to get it to stick so you can store it. Because you don't want this sticking next to something else. That's the only thing that's bad. But if you knew that you absolutely, like last year for Christmas, I did the um, uh, cookies and cream, I think, for my dining room wall. And I did it like this size. And I did it on a special piece of wood, and it looked great. I mean, I... I did all the things. So when you know you need something extra large, it doesn't matter if like the stencil will be reused or not. You just know you need that particular thing. Um, all right, let me get lined back up. And now I've got to keep this off of the mat while I line this up. And I know this is painful to watch twice because I'm not good at it. Okay, I think that's it. And you always tape, always, always, always tape in two places. Never ever tape one place because if I lift this tape, let's lift that up. If I lift that up, I can jockey this around. Okay, so you don't want that. So now let me get it lined back up. That's three times. You're welcome. Okay, get it lined back up. Thankfully, it was kind of already lined up. Now, watch this. It's a big difference. Now, I can't move it anywhere. So two places does that. And then if you're out of places around the edge of your piece, you can tape through a letter and then tape through another letter um, or through an element. So that's how you can jiggle that around if you don't happen to have, um, if you don't have, what was I going to, I don't even know what I was going to say. All right, if you don't have a place to tape, that's what it was. Okay, so we're going to take this dark burgundy and paper towel and i've got these just pre-folded um so if you don't want to bleed under your stencil i would never use adhesive medium um, this is repositionable by the way and it works like a champ um i don't know even when but we've done videos that talk about how you can do things on fabric and stuff like that um this did fabric three or four times um, without losing its tack so it's great um, it's on the website. I'm not even sure what brand it is. It's kind of like a no name, um, which makes it more affordable. Anyway, so I've got my paper towel double folded. If you don't want to bleed under, uh, so what I was going to say, on this tape, on a small stencil, I would never, ever use that. On a big stencil, especially after this, and I never bleed under, these big giant areas really did bleed under. So I'm going to make sure I press that all down. And you have to kind of work at it, give it a little shove because um, it like grabs it. And I think that's part of its repositionableness is that you have to actually make it make contact. But it did fabric, it did like velvety fabric. So it's, it's kind of cool. All right, so now that we've talked about what you want for Christmas, tell us what your favorite holiday traditions are. Ours is always, been going and chopping down our own Christmas tree. And then every year for Christmas, the kids would, um, I have five sons, and the boys would always go get to pick out their very own ornament um, set. Like we'd go to Target or wherever where they had those really cool like glass blown ones and we'd all choose a different one. And then as they moved out, we packed them up and they had all their ornaments from childhood to start their own tree. All right, so I'm gonna pick up some paint. We're talking about how not to bleed under. I'm gonna pick up my paint. Um, I always try, if possible, like I'm filming so I'm limited space here, I try not to have my palette and my paper towel on my project because if you do that, then what can happen, um, ask me how I know, um, you can make a mess all over your project while you're not even looking and then after you get this perfect part done, you move the stuff that's in the way and you see the mess. 
And that can be like miserable if you've done like two years of work on something, you know. Um, I paint and have painted complicated things and that's, you never want to do that. So if you're just stenciling, it's probably okay. But if you're worried about it and the work will be hard, then you want to watch that. Okay, so we pick up the paint. We're not going to bleed under. We're going to rub off on our paper towel and we kind of want to get to a place where, see that's just barely um, rouging my finger. And yes, I was in dye earlier, so it's a, it's a red moment. Um, but anyway, so just barely rouging, that's about the right amount. And then we'll come down here and then ever so softly. So the very first stroke that you put on your, on your project is gonna be the one where um, all the paint's gonna be there. Okay, so as I move along, I'm gonna be heavier and heavier pressure, but at the very front of it, I'm gonna start super soft, super light, hardly anything going down. And this is almost dry right now. So I can go right back to that and do a second coat, but if I did it really heavy and I was like, kling, 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 then, um, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So if you're just coming and joining us, make sure that you're liking and sharing and commenting. You're gonna win some brushes, or you can win some brushes. Three lucky people are gonna win brushes. And then if you can't, if you don't win today or you can't stay for the whole episode, um, we're gonna recast tonight and there will still be somebody live to answer your questions this evening. And then you can always comment and make sure to go find our YouTube page because like Lena did, uh, top things that she wants to get for Christmas on our YouTube channel. So you can look for that. And then there's all these other videos there too. Like we can't put everything on Facebook because it would be a giant mess, but we have a YouTube channel and we can put lots of things there. So if you don't find what you're looking for here, go, go there and get it. All right, I'm gonna keep scumbling. If only I didn't talk with my hands. Okay. Keep scumbling. Just keep scumbling. Okay. And we get to the end. See how fast this goes? So what I love about scumbling is this. It goes fast. And then I can repeat. So then we say, Lena says, and she taught me to say it, um, Lena's my daughter-in-law, by the way. Um, but she says that stenciling is a layers game. And it's absolutely true. So if you're not going to layer it, you're going to have to work really hard to either clean it up or wait for it to dry or whatever. So you might as well do the layers game, and then it'll be perfect when you get done, and you won't have to clean up, and you won't have to wait. Okay, so now, and then you can peek too. So it's always fun to ask, are you a peeker? So does that mean that you go like, I wonder how it's turning out. Ah, oh, it's perfect. So peeking, I'm a peeker. When I was a small child, I may have peeked at my Christmas presents. I think I wasn't that small. I think I was 12. And my mom used to always put all the tree, all the presents under the trees as we grew up and, and they were all sitting there like, and I was like very curious about them. So um, one year, at, when I was 12, um, I peeked under everything. I peeked in everything. I retaped them. I was very clever about it. And then everything that I got was like tragic, like turquoise velvet pants. And I, it, it was, it, for a 12-year-old, I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. And at Christmas time, I had to fake pretend I was very excited about everything. And so I have never peeked since. So I learned my lesson, but I do peek under stencils. All right, so we're gonna do another coat. And after this coat, we're gonna stipple, which is the tapping, just to get the final um, color to match. And then I've got a neat, a neat trick. You're not, this is kind of a cool project because there's a lot going on here, a lot that you can do. All right, so I'm gonna get this dark to match this color. I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve. I owned um, shops a couple times during my career, and um, we used to bring in guest artists and um, all kinds of people that were professionals in the field and stuff. And so when they would come in, we would bring in these big, like 50-person classes of people to take the thing. And then what happened then is um, I would learn all those tricks, but then we would had 50 people there that knew all their tricks. So between all the trick sharing, we learned a lot. All right, so now I'm going to stipple. 
All right, I wanna know what your favorite, favorite item to paint on is. Like, are you a board girl? Are you a fabric? Are you pillows? Are you, are you cake? Are you cookies? Did you know that our stencils are um, food safe? Like that's something I don't think a lot of people realize. So you can use any of our stencils on food items. You can use them on cakes, cookies, um, coffee, um, any of that, any of that kind of stuff. All right, so we're gonna see if I manage to stencil without bleeding under because I'm a freaking professional here. This is my goal today is to know how to stencil. So that's why we have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, it was actually really um, humbling today when I was doing this and I was like, are you even kidding me? Um, that all just like did that. However, um, I decided instead of covering it up, being a big old phony baloney, that I would be like, I'm gonna share this because even I can make things screw up. So um, I thought it would be more educational for you to know how to fix it. All right, almost there. I see some splotches and stuff in here. I'm just trying to even it out. And it doesn't have to be solid. You can go in and pretend like you're doing makeup and just even rouge it out. You can blow dry in between right on top of this. It won't matter. Um, and then we're going to peek and see. We're going to reveal and see if I manage to not bleed under. Okay, you ready? Look for the spots. I may hide this really quick. All right. So I do have a little spot there, and I have a little spot down there. So I didn't completely escape. It's not horrible, but it's not perfect. So let me show you how to fix it. And I'm actually gonna change to the other side because this is wet. Um, make sure if you're liking this content, like, share, and comment. And we have our grand prize, which is the Christmas set. Um, I think it looks like there's like, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 stencils in that with the, ooh, with the alphabet um, as well. So that's our grand prize. And if you like our contest, make sure that you tell us or like our prizes. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to fix the thing. And this is going to be our plaid stencil. I'm going to get that out of the way. All right, so I've got some blurbles here. I've got some over here. They're a little bit kind of scattered everywhere. I mean, this was a train wreck. I've got two things going on. Okay, number one, I mixed this color. So if you mix your color and you're afraid you can't mix it again, then um, you want to go ahead and save a little bit in like a film canister, um, pill bottle, um, under some saran wrap, whatever you've got that will do that. So make sure you hold some of that back. I've dug it out of the trash before and it'll be fresh inside the fold. Like I have it not messed up before. They definitely have messed up. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do it. I don't have a good round brush here. This is a really abused round brush, but um, it used to be the rule that we thought the way that you fixed your stencil is you'd use like a round brush and you'd like line, 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 line and all of that. And what happens is it makes a ridge, let me get rid of that one. It makes a ridge on the letter side and it makes a ridge on the outside. And so then you end up having to fix ridges, terrible. So what you can do is you can take this like angle shader, it's super thin, okay? And then you're going to accidentally, I can use this color that is not quite the color. Actually, I think this is the right one. Um, I can just mix a little batch. But I got really close to the color um, just by having accidentally done it. Okay, remember, not very much dark. I'm talking in like scattered sentences, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep my napkins from blowing away, doing all the stuff. However, I'm very grateful there's a fan. Always warm. Okay, so and you get under lights and all this stuff and it's crazy. All right, so I'm not gonna wet this brush, but if I did wet this brush, then what I would do is I would blot it strongly. Okay, I'm going to just dip the corner of the toe. I call this the toe and this the heel. Okay, I'm gonna put that right in that paint and then blend that, okay? Just keep it in the same spot, a little short blend. Doesn't, there's nothing fancy about this. Don't try to make it be big and whatever. You don't need this to float across your brush or anything like that. I am talking my brush dry because um, that's not going to stay wet long because it is dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up next to my letter and I'm just going to run that brush right along and then 
Ta-da! Magic trick. It's gone. So you can do this one. And it's much easier if you pull it towards yourself. I'm doing the top because I can't turn this. Um, I've got a little smear here. I'm not even sure what in the world happened there. So I can go in. So this B is bugging me. And I can use either side of my brush. And it's Presto Magic Erased. Isn't that fabulous? That, <sighs> now you know how to fix a thing. So as long as you can match your background color, then you can do that. The other thing that you can do is you can take your um, same brush and you could get water on it if it's not very dry and you can run water next to it and then erase it. Okay, now we're gonna add the detail. Oh, um, these brushes, um, they are, this is an angle shader. Um, they're on our website. Um, I've been using these brushes for probably 20 years. Um, they're magic and they're cheap. Um, and when I very first started painting, I went to Michael's, I think it was, and that's been 30 years ago, right? I go to Michael's and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint, you know, and I get in there and I grab this like wonky weird brush and I'm like, oh, this must be an artist brush. The handle was this long and um, I had no idea what I was doing. So, um, by coming to our site, listening to our videos, you're gonna learn what brushes work and what brushes don't. I will not ever keep a brush that doesn't work, so you never have to worry about that um, because I think that's goofy. Okay, so on my, um, on my detail, I use the um, tea towel stencil. We talked about this in other videos. This is like a train wreck of a stencil. It's just woogly woogly. I recommend this one being something that you clip in your closet and don't do it this way because look at what happens. Okay, do it sideways so the stripes have gravity on their side, but clip it to a hanger, um, something, store this one special, excuse me, and, um, and then you'll keep it nice, but you'll use this over and over again. You can use a single stripe and band. You can do all kinds of things with this. So I'm gonna get on camera. And then, what did I do on this side? Ha! Ah, it's probably a good idea to know. I did this end one. Okay. So, um, some people have had, they've reported to me, and I have done, I don't know how many, um, how many um, banners out of this fabric. Um, probably 30 or 40 um, that I've published and done all that kind of stuff. And people have reported that they have problems with things um, curling. Um, there's a Canadian product um, that's called Fini, I think, and it is a varnish and it will make this stuff curl like there's nobody's business. Um, I tend not to varnish, but if I do varnish, I use a roller. I don't use a big um, brush on this. I always use a roller. And then if you're really struggling with it, and you can see mine has been, nothing has been done to this but two coats of paint. Um, there's, no, there's no anything happening with it, but um, heat it with a blow dryer and um, you can also paint the back side. And what that will do, if you paint the back side, it gives it like some weight. And so it'll actually settle down and do a thing. This isn't doing any of that and it, they never do for me. So I, I'm always trying to be aware of what I've done differently, but I don't think I'm doing anything. So I've told you what I've done and that's what I can do. And then I do know that heat does help. When I um, have traveled to conventions and done things like that, um, I have taken banners that were rolled up or you know, got mushed with something else and whatever. Um, I've just heated them with a blow dryer and hung them right up and they were fine. So it's very, very durable. They can go outside. Um, this fabric is, um, by the way, when you're doing your rolling, I didn't cover that because I didn't wait for it to um, dry. Um, this is non-porous, like it's fabric, but it isn't porous. And so what's, it's like that blackout, so you can't see through it, so it's some plastic thing. Um, so what that means is your paint's gonna take a lot longer to dry. So you can force dry it with the blow dryer or you can just put it in front of a fan or leave it alone for a while and then come at it again. All right, I'm gonna use this on my stripes because I wouldn't want to try that any other way. And I'm just skipping, I'm not doing it every old wear. Because every old wear is where we're at. Remember to like, share, and comment, and tell us where you're from. I think I already asked you that, but when you tell us where you're from, it's so cool to see, like, spitting while I'm talking, sorry. Um, it's so cool to see because, like, you know, we, we sit in our offices and, you know, we have big meetings about, like, what to make and all this kind of stuff, and then 
when we see like people from California, New York and Texas and all those places, Nebraska and all of that showing up and painting and loving it, it makes it like so gratifying. So it's super, it's a satisfying ex experience. All right, so we're gonna go make the lines. We're going to make them on here. You have to push on this just a little bit to get it to do. And on that middle one, this little tape line thing is bigger than my middle one. So I just roll it anyway and then wipe the tape off. I think I need to get a new one here. So I, it's going to make a mess on my table and then I just kind of massage it off. It doesn't like doing the skinny one. It, it likes it to have firm contact. So, all right. And then they kind of just um, peel off. So now I'm going to line this up and see how they're sticking together right there. Ugh. So I'm going to line it up here. I'm just making it even on either side. This is the watch patty line up video. Okay. And I'm going to take that first one down and tack it down. And now my line here is sticking together. So I'm going to get that right. Come on, little guy. Scooch over. Tea towel fabric is ridiculously expensive. So by having tea towel stripes, and we've got even um, the feed sack stencils, we've got antique feed sack stencils. So like you can paint your chair fabric, you can paint, um, you can embellish, you can paint fabrics, you can paint your countertops, you can paint your furniture, you can do all of that stuff with these. And it's amazing. I love that trend because it's that little bit of old and new. All right, so there we go, we're stuck down. And then on the stripes, I wanted them to be a little bit more faint, like antique stuff. So I didn't do it as heavy. And then with this, if I go swirly, swirly this way, I'm gonna shove those stripes around because they're super sensitive. So I'm gonna go swirly, swirly this way. Okay, we'll get those on there. And then we've got one more step, so you're running out of time to like, share, and comment. And if you're catching us on YouTube, um, you're, you're going to see that we're like, sharing, and commenting. We have a lot of other videos there as well. So we have, hey, stick down. We have um, what we call uh, fast videos or quick videos, speed videos, that's the one. Um, and those are without sound, no talking, no liking and sharing and um, they just show you really cool techniques. So like you don't wanna miss out on those. And then we've got Ask Carrie, and she is the one that will ask questions that are from our studio audience and, um, not our studio audience, our social media audience, I'm not sure what you say, but um, she'll ask those questions and, um, and she um, asks Lena, me, other experts, how you do things. And so she takes your questions and then asks us the questions. So we've got that feature. And then we also have like full blown like production things. So don't miss out, go to YouTube and then search for Studio R12. That was an R. I don't think that looked like an R. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. And it's funny, I've been um, um, doing the stencil painting myself, um, like I've always, painted with stencil. I've painted with stencils for like the last 10 years or so, like a lot with stencils. But um, in the last three or four years, I have learned that I really love to stand up when I paint. Um, I love it way better than sitting down. I kind of get into it a little bit more when I can lean over. And when you're sitting, it's just kind of really proper. Um, I think I like to dig in. Okay, so I'm gonna peel, bag, peel this off. And I'm happy to say that those are absolutely perfect. I'm gonna put this stencil away so it doesn't get all broken. Now, when I did this side, over here, um, I did it the same way. I did the faint coloring over here. And can you, can you hear that? Let me see if I have a fine sanding disc in here. I do, it's got schmutz on it. Okay, there, schmutz gone. Um, 
So I didn't sand this, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand it. Okay, now listen, it's better. See the difference? So sanding it makes it feel much finer and it just takes those little things off. So, but what I thought was cool was I liked that this was faded and I didn't like how this was solid. And so I thought, what can I do about that? 60 grit sandpaper, baby. Here we go. So, I'm just gonna go right on through it. This stuff is so durable. So look at that. So you can even grunge out your fabric painting. It also helps with the blurbly little edges that I messed up on. Doesn't that look so good and aged? I love that. Love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll that up a little bit. Come on back. I want this to go straight. Ooh, I love that. Look at how it did it irregular. Neat. I actually have never done this before. I've sanded the background, but I've never sanded through things after I had them painted. Not on rock lawn anyway. I do it all the time on wood. That looks just like distressed denim or something. Mm. Okay, just do the rest of these. And then I'm gonna experiment. Um, I had a thought and I didn't get it all planned out in my head. So I hope it works. I've never done this before, so. Okay, we got that done. And I thought, since this is fabric, oh, I don't like that that's rough. It's tough, that. Okay, so this bent when I did that, which is fine. I can just heat it, and that'll take that little crinkle out. So we thought that we would try, I think this is called um, London plaid. I think that's right. It is um, STCL, which is for stencil, and it's 2852. This is underscore one. So I thought it might be cool to make some cool, like, wovenness of the thing. And I don't know if it'll look good in gray or if it'll look good in white or if it won't look good at all. So we're going to try it because you should do that when you're live doing filming and stuff. And this, so these brushes are magic. These, they're perfect. Hey, that one had dust. Not sure why. Okay, these are super soft when they're brand new. Um, I love them when they get more worn and stained and rubbed down. And we use like a ginger grater to just like clean them up and stuff. So if I have a new this size one. Um, so, well, they're actually the same size, so it really hasn't worn it down any. Um, it does loosen the hairs, but the paint that's still stuck in there or something makes them a little bit stiffer. These are just a little bit floppier when they're brand new. So as soon as you use them, scrub them, dry them, they're gonna get better and better. Okay, so we're gonna try white and we're gonna peek and see. So I've got this just lined up with the edge of my um, tea towel stuff and I'm going to try over here. These lines are super small, so you notice I'm not even trying not to bleed under. All right, I'm gonna peek immediately. That's kind of cool. I like it. Just a hint. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And I'm not gonna keep you here for the whole thing, but I'll do one pass of this so that you get a reveal. And I'm not gonna put it on my letters. And then when I move it, I'll just realign it. Match up my lines and then just move it. I don't even know if you have to do it like solid all the way through. Okay, so this is coming into the end of what we're doing. So make sure, like, share, and comment if you want a chance to win. I mean, you're already a winner because you're a painter, right? How many of you think of yourself as artists? Like, that's such an interesting thing, isn't it? So, like, you're using paint, you're using brushes, and you're using stencils. Um, do you feel creative when you're painting? Interesting question, isn't it? I think you're artists. 
Okay, so. Get that done. Can't wait to pull this off and show you. This is exciting. These are the things that make me um, happy that I do what I do because it's always interesting to just try new things and to play. I think of this as playing and you know, if you, if you think about this piece of, you know, however much $5 rock loan or whatever like that, you think about that and then you think about the fact that you could just sand a little bit to get rid of any edges, face it again, nobody needs to know, it's your secret. Okay, I think while I was talking all the time, I think I managed to do it all. Everybody's got paint everywhere. Let's get some in there. Let me get some down here. Using really heavy, heavy paint. Okay, you ready? Dun dun dun! Yeah, baby, that's so great. So see here where I got it really heavy. As soon as that dries, I'm gonna sand it. So we're not even gonna worry about that. That really makes it. I I love this. This is like my new go-to. I think this is amazing. We have these kinds of stencils in like a million patterns. So make sure you go to studior12.com and check us out. And then thank you for joining us today. We had a, I had a great time and I'm glad that you learned some things. Have a good day.